Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Localhost Coding. Today I'm going to show you how to connect an IKEA Track V button to Home Assistant and get some actions mapped to it. The button I have here today is the 5 button version, which is targeted towards lights, but I like to use for media control. A quick note before we continue about IKEA Track V buttons and Hubitat. While this is a Zigbee button, it uses a non standard Zigbee API to communicate. This means that it will not pair with Hubitat. The developers have made it clear they have no interest in trying to get these two systems working together. So if you have Hubitat, I advise against getting this button. Inside the box is a CR2032 battery and a magnetic base, which does have mounting holes if you want to mount it with screws. It also comes with a double-sided 3M sticker that you can mount if you don't want to use the screws. I will now show you how to get the button into pairing mode and factory reset it. To do this, first you have to open up the back. I'm going to go ahead and use a pair of scissors to pop it open. With the back open, you can now insert the battery, inserting the top end first. With the battery inserted, you have to press the sync button four times within five seconds to factory reset it and put it into pairing mode. If successful, you should see a red light blinking. With it in syncing mode, I'm going to go ahead and place it next to my Conbi 2 Zigbee gateway which is connected to my home assistant system. I'm going to go ahead and hop on over to my computer where we can finish the syncing process and get some actions mapped to the button. Okay, here I am inside of my home assistant. To pair the device, go ahead and head over to configuration and then devices and services. For this video, I am gonna be using ZHA, Zigbee Home Automation. ZHA has been great for me and I would definitely recommend it. Hit configure. And from ZHA, hit Add Device. Remember, the IKEA button should be blinking red to show that it is in pairing mode. I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead here. OK, the device is now ready to use. Go ahead and name the device. If you don't name the device, it will have random numbers prepended to the battery sensor value inside the detail view of the button entity. So I'm going to name mine YouTube IKEA Remote and then click outside, and there we go. I'm going to go ahead and head back to Devices, so Configuration, Devices and Settings, ZHA, Configure, Devices, and here we can see the new button that we just added. I'm going to click into it. OK, I'm inside the detail view of the IKEA button, and we do have the battery power reported back to us, which is nice to have. On the right hand side, you can see automations, scenes, and scripts that this button is a part of. Since it is a new button, it doesn't have anything assigned to it yet. With the button set up, let's go ahead and start adding actions to the button so you can get this IKEA button working for you. To start, go ahead and head over to this web page. I'll go ahead and drop a link down below for easy access. This blueprint is made by Nairo 1987 and it is amazing. In the description of the post, he lists what actions can be performed by this button, and what makes this blueprint nice is that in addition to the short presses that are usually mapped, he also mapped the long presses for us. This means that you'll have a total of 10 different actions available to you from the button. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this link right here, which is just a link to his GitHub. Then I'm gonna head over to Home Assistant from Home Assistant, I'm looking at Configuration. From here, I go to Blueprints. At the bottom right, I click on Import Blueprint. And I'm going to go ahead and paste the link that I copied. I'm going to go ahead and preview the Blueprint. Here is the path to the Blueprint. I'm going to go ahead and leave it default and show you where this is in a moment. Here is the Blueprint contents. I'm going to go ahead and import it. And now we do have the Blueprint imported. So where this path is, I'll show you in the terminal. So in the terminal, you can see I already print the working directory, root config blueprints. So if I go ahead and list the contents and change to the automation directory, list again, we can see that is where the blueprint is saved. Here it is, and I can go ahead and list the contents of it. And that is what we previewed when we imported the Blueprint. OK, with the Blueprint imported, let's go ahead and use it to finally create some actions for the button. 
I'm going to go ahead and head down to Configurations. From Configuration, we select on Blueprints. We locate the blueprint that we just imported. Select on Create Automation. And this is what's nice about Blueprints. You don't have to mess with any configuration YAMOs or any code. It's all presented to you in this nice UI. OK, now we can begin filling out this blueprint. Let's start with the name. Since I'm using mine as a media controller, I'll go ahead and name it that. Media Controller IKEA. Next, we have our blueprint. But since we selected the blueprint from the blueprint menu, it was automatically selected for us. Next, we have to select the remote. And this is the remote which actions will be applied from. I'm going to select the remote that I paired earlier. And below this is all the buttons which actions can be mapped to. I'm going to start with the big button, so the power button, short press. Since I'm using mine as a media controller, I'm going to do call service for the action type. And I'm going to call play pause. With the action selected, we have to select what device the action will be applied to. So choose device. I'm going to select my Sonos media room. And just like that, we have our first action applied to our IKEA trad free button. I'm going to go ahead and continue. So for the short press dim button up, I'm going to do volume next. So for the action type, same thing, call service. This time I'm going to choose volume and I'm going to turn the volume up. Same device, media room. Short press dim button down. This will be the opposite. So I'm going to do call service, volume again. And I'm going to set the volume down, so turn volume down on my Sonos Media Room. Color button up, and this is going to control the tracks. So for action, call service, track, next, same device, color button down, service, track, previous. Okay, now we have all five short button presses mapped to the IKEA button, but I'm going to go ahead and continue and add two more. So for a dim button up, I'm going to do a long press, call service, volume. This time I'm going to set the volume. Same device, set the volume to 0.5. So it'll be set to 50% volume. Okay, so long press down is going to be volume again. I'm going to set the volume on my IKEA media room, Sonos speaker to 0.1. There we go. Just noticed up here from my previous, I forgot to choose the device. So let's go ahead and select media room and save. All right, let's review. We now have all our buttons mapped on our IKEA trad free button. I used mine for my Sonos speakers that I got from IKEA, but you can go ahead and use this blueprint for other things as well. Just like I showed, it doesn't have to be lights and it doesn't have to be media control. So let's go ahead and check out this automation and go from there. All right, time to see if this button works. I have my IKEA Sonos speaker right here. I have the speaker information displayed through Home Assistant on a tablet. Let's see if I hear some lo-fi hip hop on button press. Yep, I hear some lo-fi hip hop. Let's try lowering the volume. Yep, I see the volume going down, up. Up looks to be working. Next track, I see the display art for next track. Previous track, previous track seems to be working. Let's try the long presses. Long press down, I saw it jump down. Long press up, and I see it jumped up. Sweet, it looks like this button is all working. Real quick, I'm gonna talk about deleting automations. I'm gonna go to configuration automations and scenes. And here is my media controller IKEA automation. Next to it is a toggle if you want to temporarily disable the automation. I'm going to go ahead and re-enable it. For a more permanent option, you have to move over to the right side and click on the eye. In the top right hand corner of the modal, click on the cogwheel. And at the bottom, you can see the more permanent disable. Unfortunately, this will not delete the automation, but it will remove it from the view. Truly, deleting the automation takes a lot more work. I'm going to go ahead and drop a link down below to a Reddit thread discussing the matter more. But as it stands, 
there is no easy way to permanently remove the automation entity. I'm going to go ahead and update it. And you will see that it has been removed from this view. I hope you are finding this video useful. If you would like to see more videos like it, go ahead and drop a like, comment, or subscribe. That would be huge for me. Let's go ahead and review what has been covered. In this video, I showed you how to put the button into pairing mode and factory reset it. I showed you where to get a blueprint that is open and customizable to your needs. I showed you how to use the blueprint with examples based on a media controller. And finally, I showed you how to disable the button. I went ahead and put my button setup in the bottom right there. Again, I hope you found this video useful and have a good day, y'all.